Climate change is real and human actions are, are causing it. And we're, the amazing thing is that we're seeing the impacts all over the world right now, including in the oceans. We have animals that are found much closer to the poles than they, they used to be. We have animals breeding earlier in the year. And these changes cascade all the way up. They're affecting our fisheries, they're affecting our economies, and ultimately they affect our planet. Climate change is certainly real. Um, it's uh, been affecting our local uh, businesses. It's been affecting our local ecosystems. And we can see it on a global scale, but we can also see it here in New Jersey. Regardless of what causes it, we have climate change. We're, you know, we're living in, in, in a time when the climate is changing, so that needs to be addressed scientifically and made part of the fisheries management process. Globally, the ocean is about half a degree warmer than it was 100 years ago. That's the impact of global climate change. It doesn't sound like much, but actually compared to what marine animals are used to, that's a very large change. It's far outside what many species are, are used to over the lifetime of an individual or an entire evolutionary lineage. We can see fished stocks moving out of the region that were traditionally part of the fishery. Things like lobster used to get fished here um, in, in a bigger way, and today there's very little lobster fisher, fishing here because the lobster have moved north. Many species that now used to be found off Virginia are now actually being found much more commonly off New Jersey. Species like uh, black sea bass, summer flounder, uh, we're also seeing shrimp that used to be more commonly found in the southeast U.S. now showing up in marshes and estuaries in, in this region. So we're seeing many species moving north in this region that we haven't seen before. We historically had a mackerel fishery here uh, ever since I've been in this business. And about seven or eight years ago, uh, we started to see a decline in mackerel catches. At the same time, we saw a drastic in increase in the catch of mackerel in uh, Greenland, uh, Iceland, and the Faroe Islands. Fish that, you know, that they basically never had there before. We're still collecting a lot of the information about how impacts from climate change are filtering through fisheries and affecting fisheries, but some of the stories are becoming quite clear. One of the impacts we understand the best right now is on surf clams. It's a species, again, a really big fishery here on the East Coast, but surf clams have been dying at the southern edge of the, edge of the range, so in Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, as temperatures get really warm up there. But it turns out they're booming in Massachusetts. Uh, and what this means is that the stock is no longer accessible to the places that used to fish it. Uh, some of the ports in Maryland, for example, uh, or Virginia, now can no longer support the fishery. And so those, those captains and crew have either had to shift north as well and start fishing out of northern ports, which is very costly and very hard on family life. Um, and in fact, they've had to reposition um, processing plants and some of these uh, value-added pieces of the industry. There's a great deal of uncertainty still associated with how climate change will affect shellfish diseases. Just like ranges shift for fish stocks, ranges can shift for these disease pathogens as well. One of the things that we have seen recently, which we think has something to do with warming, is an invasion of parasites in the southern part of the scallop fishery. And that's something that we haven't seen before. Whether that's caused by warming or not caused by warming, I don't know that, but it's certainly something we're very concerned with. Ocean acidification is the other carbon dioxide problem, one that we, we don't talk about as much. It's when carbon dioxide dissolves into ocean water, it actually reduces the pH. It makes the water mo more acidic than it has been before. And it makes it much harder for marine animals to make their shells. So their shells get more brittle. Uh, often their survival goes down or their reproduction goes down. In talking with fishermen who rely on shellfish resources or aquaculturists who grow shellfish, I'm often asked, how is ocean acidification going to affect my business, my fishing? These people have heard what ocean acidification is, but how it's going to affect their bottom line isn't clear. And I, I think that's a, that's a really important issue for us to address as a science community. For example, sea scallops here on the East Coast, it's the most valuable fishery in the United States about $110 million here in New Jersey, 
about $600 million nationally. And this is a species that's very sensitive to ocean acidification. So there are big worries about what will happen going forward. Sea level rise is also a, a major issue uh, for coastal communities and the fishing communities that live and work in these areas. As the ocean heats up, uh, seawater expands and the ocean level rises because of that. And then at the same time, glaciers and ice caps melt. And that additional water in the ocean also raises the sea level. We're seeing the docks and the infrastructure associated with the packing plants. Um, these places are getting flooded. For example, here in Cape May, um, we have a number of, of restaurants or businesses that get regularly flooded now, and they didn't 20, 30 years ago. So fisheries rely on much more than just the fish, right? So they, they, need, they need docks, they need processing plants, they need suppliers for hooks and lines and nets. And many of those businesses and other infrastructure are right along the coast. So they're really vulnerable to rising sea level and especially the storms that come in on top of that. As climate change affects life in the ocean, affects where fish are found, we're seeing those economic impacts ripple through fisheries, ripple through coastal communities, and ripple through regional economies. These rain shifts are happening, uh, and they're happening at different rates, and we don't know very well what the interactions might be. But what we do know is that it's affecting the fishermen and the communities that are physically associated with the traditional ranges. Our fisheries regulations are based on this assumption that fish stay put but they don't. Uh, so for example, quota, who gets to catch the fish, has been allocated ba based on where fish were in the 80s. There's a real problem still in the regulatory process uh, as concerns species moving out of the area, most likely due to warming. Fish have fins for a reason. They move and they swim to where, you know, things are best for them. And the regulatory process is very slow and very cumbersome. It takes a long time to change things around. There are many things the fishing industry can do to adapt. One is to work with the uh, management councils and the researchers to understand the changes that are happening. People are out on these fishing boats are on the front lines. They're seeing these changes in the ocean before anyone else is seeing them. Um, they also usually have the, the knowledge to know what things used to be like. So helping to communicate those, those impacts and understand how the ocean is changing is, is critical. I think the biggest deficit that we have in fisheries management right now is, you know, where there's not enough money being spent on uh, on science. You know, we need we need more science. The more we know, the better we can manage. We try to provide our science uh, as as openly and as as rapidly as we can um, to both management agencies and industry uh, and academia, uh, and hopefully that will be effective uh, in bringing sustainable management to these uh, industries. Fishermen realize that in order to have successful business and for their children to have a successful business, for their businesses to survive, that we have to have a healthy resource, a sustainable, renewable resource that we can count on. The key point is that the, the oceans are warmer and more acidic than any point in recorded history, maybe even more than any point in the history of modern humans. And I think everyone alive today should be worried about that. And this affects our economies, this affects our dinner plates, this affects the planet. And so I think the key questions are, what do we do going forward?